Tell him I'm coming. You're too late. Hell's gonna walk the earth. Hell already is walking the earth. Man, who keeps kidnapping Nicolas Cage and putting him in movies and making him act badly? I mean, you know, he, he Nicolas Cage is a good actor, at least from, from what I remember. Well, 20 he, years he ago. He was. Yeah. <laughs> and he, the, the talent may not have diminished, but the desire to do good acting is long gone. Well, it had certainly gotten more frantic, that's for sure. Yeah. It's like he went from being able to play roles where he could actually be kind of more calm and downplayed, even when they were wacky, like in Raising Arizona. Sure. It's like every movie being crazy crystal mathed out Nicolas Cage. I think it's just because he keeps spending money faster than he can make it. But the weird thing <laughs> is, Cyrus, it's like like you take movies like this and Ghost Rider. Like it's the movies that are terrible and, and, and whacked out. But he's fairly calm. Yeah. He's just kind of being more, I'm the cool Nick. Well, no. well, well, it seems, it seems <laughs> like now he's playing the, the character from Wild Things all the time. I mean, really. I but, mean, he's but, always sporting like a cool jacket. And he's right. always having, he always has that Elvis pose now. Yeah. yeah he's he, just he, like standing there with his legs spread open. I mean, <laughs> he's got different speeds. Like it's not quite as ratcheted up mm. a, as, as that movie. But still, it, it, you're right. It's, the same. it's always, well, it's, it's the hair, it's the leather. Yeah, maybe all the energy has gone into his hair. And that's, that's what I was thinking. It's like the, 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 the hair piece of Dorian Gray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell to pay. Well, uh, I, I just think maybe he's just got a, an addiction to to wigs. Like you know, he knows that hey, this is the one chance I get to wear something covering my head. Uh, he's addicted to Prozac because you're talking about like he's got that cool pose. No, it looked like somebody just put him on the set, took a bag off his head, and he's looking around like, where the fuck am I? <laughs> you know, like he's looking around like, oh yeah. And then it, yeah. then well, right when he's about to come to, he's like, well, what is this? A script. I'm not going to read this. this yeah. Yeah. Oh. I presume that dr uh, Drive Angry is the latest in a series of Nicolas Cage's Weren't You in Leaving Las Vegas movies where you go, <laughs> what happened, dude? It is. <laughs> it's more enjoyable than most of them. Yeah. Uh, but, I, I think, it, but I, I, still, it is. I, I think if you were ever wondering what a fun Ghost Rider movie would be like, this is it. This is it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's It's like... I remember watching Ghost Rider, and you know how how just terrible it is. It's just like bad in that. It's just banal. Way. Yeah, and that way that it's silly. But you like, you know what? If they would like have the balls and go for it, you know, even just allowing for the ridiculousness of it, but play into it, just amp it up. Yeah. You know, what could they do? They they could actually turn this around. And yet in Ghost Rider, you know, within 15 minutes, you go like, they don't have the smart. Well, just to do play that. up the stupidity of the entire story. Right. I mean, yeah. So this is that movie where they do that. It's almost like. A director signed on for something, a Nicolas Cage movie. Like, he signed on 15 years ago to direct a Nicolas Cage movie. Signed a contract, had to do it. Now it's 15 years later. It's come around. Oh, this is a Nicolas Cage I get. Let me see the script. Oh, my oh, God. Shit. What am I going to do? Yeah, let, let me see the script. Yeah. that deal. <laughs> let, yeah. let, let me see the script and let me see the hair piece he's going to wear because I don't want anybody laughing at this. <laughs> it's, it's like this guy was crying and he just, in the middle of, he was in a motel with a bottle of Jack Daniels and he just dug within himself and he's like, you know what? I am going to make the most fabulous piece of shit ever. <laughs> now, uh, I keep hearing the real star of this is actually William Fickner. I believe that's the actor's name he, who plays yeah. the devil in it. Uh, people are raving about him in there. It's, it's a great performance. It's, okay. it's, you know, he's another in the series of Agent Smith type roles. It's all going Milton. Stop the car. I can't do that. Really? really? What makes you think you have a choice? Uh, because you're obnoxious first and because I have something I got to do. Well, then you should have done it a long time ago. I didn't have to do it a long time ago, did I? Oh, Milton, I will kill that pretty little woman in the back seat to get to you. You think you're Loki? Huh? You think you're Baron Samedi? I won't allow that. Uh, well, again, what makes you think you have a choice? Okay, so what is this movie actually about? Well, see, that's the thing. The trailer did such a great job at not telling you what True. this was about. Yeah, I, I knew the devil was involved and cars and Nicolas Cage's hair. And that oh, was there it. you go. That's it. Well, you know what? No, you look at that trailer and like... Man, this was like the most stupid ass action movie I've ever seen. And yeah. you see it, it's like, oh, this is the most stupid ass action movie I've seen with the devil in it. <laughs> I mean, because they don't, they, they leave that part out of the movie, yeah. out of the trailer. So yeah. I got it in this day and age where they give away so much shit in yeah. a trailer. And you're yeah. like, man, they left nothing to surprise. I mean, the moment they open up the first frame of this movie, you're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. What does this have to do with anything? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. you, and so when you, what that it, has It was like to, Baldur's Gate when it first opens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what that has to do with anything is that. Well, they don't tell you at the beginning that this that hell is involved, but it is because Nicolas Cage plays a guy who's come back from hell. 
I mean, he's escapes because he has this love for his his granddaughter and his daughter, which he's done wrong in his previous life. He's oh. come back to make amends. So the guys from Reaper have to hunt him down. Is that it? <laughs> Had it gone on another thirty minutes, that would have that's what would have happened. Okay. Yeah, yeah. His his daughter got hooked into a cult, and the cult leader, you know, killed the daughter, and and, and he's trying to track down the granddaughter, take her away. And Nicolas Cage is like. That's it. I can't take it no more. I will leave hell if I have to do what's right and kill this motherfucker and get my daughter back. Make it sound like it was a great time in hell. Like he's like, God, really? All right, fine. I'm leaving hell. They, you know what? They, they don't make it seem like it's all that bad. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> no, you I know, mean, it might be a little hot, but other than that, and all yeah, these movies, Texas, yeah, so yeah. yeah, and all these movies, hell, are not that bad. I mean, like Leon said, that's basically it. Uh, you know, wants to avenge his daughter's death and keep this guy that looks like Billy Ray Cyrus from carving his granddaughter <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, I was thinking more of Billy Bob Thornton. Sure. <laughs> really? Because I was like thinking this would have been a cool movie if he was going to kill Billy Ray Cyrus before he gave birth to, to Hannah Montana. Oh, before Hannah yeah. Montana. <laughs> I thought he just looked like a used car salesman. <laughs> no, no, no. That's true, he did. I mean, he's supposed by, to be a Jim Jones type. Yeah. But yeah by by the way, rates. the guy who plays the father in this, you, you're not going to recognize him, is, is Billy Burke. It's amazing how much a must can just fuck you up. I mean, with, <laughs> yeah. the, with the wrong kind of mustache, you look yeah. old, you look tired, mm-hmm. and because that's what this guy Billy Burke, he's a dad from, from Twilight. Well, mm-hmm. also, he's got a mustache and a really sad look on his face the whole time. Like, oh <laughs> yeah. my God, what you, kind you, of you, child have I raised here? You oh. talk about pulling a Clark Kent and making a disguise work for you. I mean, yeah. that guy has one if he ever needed one. <laughs> yeah, he's like he's like, he's like a, a too old rock star in, in this movie here. Um, and now the way Amber Heard comes into this thing, for the wrap up, I'm not sure, but uh, this is the way it starts. You know, hey, she's some hot, trash talking waitress who's got an abusive boyfriend, and somehow Nicholas Cage just decides, hey, she's the one. She she is just there just to beat the shit out of any woman that comes and fucking shares her screen time. That's all. That's you know, all you're she absolutely does. Right. That's all she does throughout the entire movie. You guys There's are totally no real selling specific me on this purpose film, for her. Well, right now, I want to see it. Based on everything Cyrus, you said. There's a good chance you'd like it. I yeah. mean. You know, to me, I tend to not like movies that are bad on purpose. And at first I was like, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. But the crowd was really into it. And it, at some point, you know, I was like, I, I'm kind of laughing with them. And just, you know, you get a good crowd, which you probably would when you see it. You, you, you'd be chuckling. You, you'd be laughing and enjoying it more often than not. This movie would have been the perfect midnight movie if they yes. decided not to have a screening. You're, you're absolutely All, right. Yeah. Only because I'm sure a lot of people would go there just to expect some kind of craziness. Just just from looking at the, at the trailer, at least you can get that hint that there is some kind of craziness. Now, when you sit down, all of a sudden the first thing the movie does is slap you in the fucking face and say, fooled you. And then you're like, whoa, what the hell? Because honestly, when I was sitting there, I was like, are we in the right movie? Because what the hell is this? What the hell is this going yeah, on? I, it's the beginning of a metalocalypse fucking video. Yeah, and I'm right. just like, what's going on here? Yeah, no, and, and, and you know what? I Look, this is the one. This is the movie where you're in the bathroom and you're taking a piss. Because that's what happened with Leon. Now, you're in the bathroom taking a piss and you'd be like, hey, man, what you think about that movie, man? It's almost like you want. It's almost like you're trying to look. Yeah, because the thing is, you, nobody wants to admit that they like it. You're not taking a piss and like, hey man, what you think about that? And you're really like, I don't know. I don't what, know you what you think about, think about it, it. <laughs> man? It, you know, I, man, that was, that was stupid, man. I still don't know what y'all yeah. thought about it. I have no idea. Y'all are like so back and forth. Like you could be giving it a full price or some old bullshit, and I have no idea. Well, here's the deal, because that's what I'm saying. This movie will fool you, because Leon and I were in there. Because I was, which, by the way, taking a long piss about lies. You still don't want to admit it. No, I know. That's what we're doing. I mean, I still like that. We made our piss longer so that. We could sit up there and convince ourselves that we like this movie. Cause I was like, he was drinking water while he was drinking. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, man, you know, it, it, it was kind of funny. He's like, yeah, it's bad, but it's funny. I was like, yeah, you know. Yeah, it was it, bad, though, right? Oh, it was yeah, definitely it, it, bad. bad. Yeah, but it had its moments. Yeah, I saw some. I mean, are you saying you liked it? I'm just saying it had its moments. I mean, how did you feel about it? It's almost like it's, – it, it's almost like I'd look at his dick before I would admit I would like the movie. Yeah. You know, because, I was, because, like, it, because here's the deal. I was going to say. It's, it's I'm just saying. It, that is it's another metaphor, story. Metaphor there, you know? yeah. But here's the deal. That's what we're trying to say. Listen, I summed it up like this. And this is what made me admit that I like the movie. I do. Fuck it. There you go. Uh, there. Right. You got it. I, I don't give a fuck. I like the film. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Because when I was watching this, I was thinking to myself, you know, the crowd was into it. But. It's that kind of crowd the you know, the mainstream white trash ghetto ass Negro crowd, you know, and they and they were loving it. But then I was thinking to myself, uh, if I was at an art screening of this, everybody would turn their nose up. Are you this. Joking? But then this is what I said. Uh, unless unless Robert Rodriguez's name came on the beginning mm. of the credits and 
every person in that theater full of hipsters and art snobs would get up and applaud like crazy at in the Austin, end. anyway. In, in, in Austin, anyway. I, I, I would say almost anywhere. Uh, you know, I mean, when we said the same thing with Ghost Ride, if Robert Rodriguez's name had been on it, the no, crowd Ghost Ride's a piece of shit. No, it would have been. It, it, it still would have been a piece of shit. Yeah, period. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, this is this is that kind of movie that I always think of as more appealing to to the hipster crowd. Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of it reminded me of stuff that Tarantino and, and Rodriguez do when they're together. But the the big difference here is that they establish right off the bat that this is steeped in hell and the devil. So when it does all this crazy shit that in these other movies, they just try to like tell you like, hey, man, just go with it. Here's yeah. like, OK, you've explained how this can happen. Plus, they're trying to sneak this one out so that people can go, oh, it's kind of an obscure Nicolas Cage movie. You probably haven't heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can see why, because listen. I mean, it's like 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 Machete, <laughs> like if it had been like if Machete had been like, you know, he came back from hell, then everything he did from that point on, it's like, OK, I totally buy it. That makes sense. Yeah, sure. that, that, that's a good point, because I always I always wondered too, like if they advertised this in the way they did, like Machete, like would would we be walking out the same way? Uh, j- just because I think the the biggest appeal of this is that it really does catch you off guard. Where I was expecting just some lame ass Gone in sixty seconds, right? Another you know riff uh, of on this uh, on this genre, this this fast car genre, and it wasn't anything like that. But I have to admit, while I was sitting there, I was having a good fucking time. This is like something that you'd see, like if, if you, we were all like in our teens, if we saw this on late night HBO cable by accident, right. having no fucking clue about it. I mean. The next day, I would be raving to my friends about this fucking crazy ass movie that I just saw. Exactly. Which, which this is the movie that that is. Well, you summed and, it up yeah. perfectly when mm-hmm. you said this is a midnight movie. Mm-hmm. You know, this is. I, I hate to go back to this, but this is Grindhouse. If they wanted to make yes. Grindhouse right. decent and enjoyable without mm-hmm. being pretentious, right. I mean, the fault of the movie is that the thing that throws people off, the thing that makes people confused when they come out, is that for everything that is intentionally good about the, the movie, <laughs> that's something unintentionally bad about it. You know, uh, so I mean, you have, like, oh. you, well, you have things like we talk about Nicolas Cage. Look, this, this I don't I don't know if Nicolas Cage is just riding off this reputation he has of being crazy uh, and sometimes just being acting bad but he's really acting you know he's not meaning to be bad or if he's just becoming a bad actor because the worst lines of the movie are his the worst acting in the movie is his but for every line that William I mean that uh, that Nicholas Cage has that bad that is bad you have William Fickner in this who comes in and manages to scoop up everything that was done badly and make it enjoyable and then you have some scenes in there like some really bad Gunplay. Some of it's cool. Some of it's really bad. But then they followed up with a really badass car chase. And I'm looking at this. I'm like, all right, you know, I got to weigh this out. The stuff that is that I'm finding enjoyable is overpowering, overplaying the stuff that I find bad. I'm I'm sitting up here laughing at lines. I'm thinking the action is cool. I'm having a really good time with this. So it's kind of a, a, a like a dumb but f- sometimes fun movie about evil that might be good to get high to. Oh, it would definitely be so good. You, oh, you yeah. could call it, it'd be a good brimstone film. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's one of those movies that any other like serious film snob will look at it and consider it shit, but the thing is about that shit is there's plenty of golden nuggets in there to pull out that just make it really worthwhile and make it just a fun movie. Just to, I mean, I hate I always hate when people say you check your brain in at the door. I don't want to say you can do this. Do that with you this might not movie. Get it back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might get your brain. I don't <laughs> Definitely don't check your hair in the door because uh, yeah, people just take cases steal it. But uh, the thing is that uh, it, it, it is it is so fun that you know there are there are those moments where it's terrible dialogue, but you're having such a good time throughout the whole thing that you almost to me at least I, it felt like some of the actors were in on it. They knew exactly kind of what they were making, and they were pretty aware, uh, well aware that the audience had no no clue, you know. But uh, I. I still had a fucking great time, honestly. It's been a while since I've seen a movie that really just kind of, you know, uh, just get, did a 180 on me. And I was like, wow, I was not expecting this, but I'm fucking glad I'm here. I'm glad I decided to come and see this. Listen, know? the they, first yeah. scene of the movie sums it up for you. They go into a diner, whatever kind of town this is. You know, you go to that diner. This, it tells you what kind of movie it's all about. You know, it's like what we say, like a man's man's movie. You walk in that diner. 
the cook got the finest waitress bent over the stove trying to fuck her, molest her in front of in front of families. You know the the, the, the wait the waitress coming over with a titties in the gravy trying to fuck you. you know? oh, it's so like, it's, it was a friendlies. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I thought it was that I hop on Caesar Chavez. <laughs> if you ever been there before, <laughs> go there sometime when you're not drunk. It won't look like that. <laughs> well, the waitresses won't look like we see in this movie. Yeah, but uh, it's late and I'll take it. Uh, yeah, you know the, the we talk about how bad the dialogue is. There's times when they just say fuck because. Because the writer couldn't come up with anything else. We need a line here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, fucking fuck, motherfucker, fuck, fuck. <laughs> like, wow, that's that's writing for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, even when the movie's trying to be polite, it says, excuse me, you fat fuck. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Hey, except William Fickner de- delivers the line in such a way where you're like, God damn, that guy's good. Dude, he steals every scene he that he's in, really. Yeah, I mean, it's does. like you almost want to spin off on his character yeah. for the next movie if they ever did one. There's a long tradition of actors playing the devil, stealing, totally stealing a show with whatever, whatever product it is, no matter how bad everything True. else was about it. And Fickner continues the lineage. Yeah, and hey, because so as we all know, the devil is cooler than everything else. I around. salute the guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, something else we haven't mentioned at all is that Really, really good 3D. This is this really? is really shot in 3D, and the 3D plays into it constantly. It's some of the best 3D since Avatar. I mean, know, they, wow. they really work on it hard. And you know, I, I have to say, like watching this, there there was moments where I was getting hints of Sam Raimi. I thought, yeah. wow, if Sam Raimi ever decided to do a 3D movie, I wonder if it would look like this. You're, you're right. Especially <laughs> especially during the more insane, like you know, you know the, no, no, just just like the insane scenes where. Like like the gates of hell are opening or something. It's like <laughs> shit like that. Even a shot, oh, yeah, even a right. shot of the moon reminded me of a Sam Raimi shot. Where I'm yeah. like, wow, okay, this uh, I'm 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 into this. I mean, so many movies these days they they bilk you, they make you pay the extra eight five or eight dollars for three D. And it ain't shit they've done. It's like, wow, that, well, that, was, that, that was pretty lame. That it was, was it's my, just a Bieber pointing at you a couple times <laughs> yeah. in the movie. Well, that was my problem with this movie. I mean, besides the obvious bad stuff in it, which still kind of made me laugh. I'm looking at this and it's like, for all the things to apply this great, you know, stunning 3D technology to that you are so proudly advertising to people. Why the fuck drive angry? Hey, why not? You know, <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's cool to take something like it, you don't. And you know, this movie is all about what you don't expect. Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't expect a movie like this to have the 3D, but that pushes it even more to that that grindhouse level. Hell's a popping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it looks like it looks like it's, if somebody like really like raped. Uh, if the devil if the devil ended up raping a fucking Disney 3D viewfinder, that's, that's kind of what it looked like. Wow. I was like, wow, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you look at that 3D viewfinder, you see the devil. Dick. You're like, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, what you doing? This is cool. This is the full price. <laughs> yeah, kids, I'm crying. <laughs> Shut up, kid. Yeah, you enjoy, master enjoy of evil. This. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, it's like I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, a lot of this is cool because it is. It, I mean, regardless of what movie it's for, I'm not going to, you know, be a snob myself and say, how come they, how dare they waste this fine technology on such fodder like this you know no it was it was cool i would just say that a lot of times they went into three stooges territory where they like threw everything but that's the, the camera, thing when we're watching know? 3d movies we're always saying how come you know we'll laugh about it, like why don't do the three stooges thing knowing that secretly we want to see that yeah i mean and while nobody gets poked in the eye almost I mean, you get some stuff that's that's, that's the equivalent I mean, of it that fits within this but movie. But this movie threw everything. I mean, <laughs> we, look, I've tried to avoid saying anything about Nicolas Cage's hairpiece because that's what we do. Right. But there's a lot of slow-mo. There's even one scene where they actually toss a piece of his hairpiece at the camera in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there is. There, you're, not, like, you're, not, you're not kidding. good money for this hair. Yeah, you're not. You're going to see it in all its yeah, glory. Yeah. That hair was like, <laughs> that hair turned into a character yeah. with the <laughs> screen. Like, that shit waved at the screen. <laughs> hey, hey. That shit was like, hey, mom. <laughs> I was wondering if Nicolas Cage was like in on that joke where he's like, yeah, I know people give me shit. So just here, go here, here, here's, this, here's something for all those assholes out there. Yeah, yeah at this here's, point, here's a joke on me. All right? but, but the thing is, the thing about the 3D, though, is that there was like a simple shot of a mirror just break, like shattering. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that one scene, al- scene alone was more effective than watching the Transformers fucking just have shards of glass covering the screen where it meant absolutely nothing. The impact, it was not there. And it was there for that small little scene in this movie. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. No, you're right. You, I mean, like I said, people, if you can't guess by now, it's like... I still I, don't know what your rating is. No, I, I'm no going to say, idea. no, I, we, look, if you can't tell... I mean, we're talking about how bad it was, but it's one of those rare movies where it's like, fuck it, man. I had fun with everything in this, including the bad stuff. I mean, 
hey, Nicolas Cage might be the worst actor, but you're laughing at him. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes you're laughing with him. I mean, you just want to come up there and just say, you know, just kiss him on the cheek. Oh, man, I know you can't pull this off, but it's all right. I'm still enjoying you. you Whatever know. drugs you're on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man, look, I'm just going to come out with it and say, you know, before anybody says anything, yes. Captain Matinee to the rescue again. <laughs> I, I liked it, man. I give it I, I, I give it a very fun matinee. You coward. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a matinee also. <laughs> because, you know what, I mean, for all the reasons we named, it, it does, you know, it, a, little bit, a few more things right than it does wrong. And Nicolas Cage is probably like the least, uh, you know, exciting character or actor in this movie but there's so much going on that it it is like wow i'm so glad i saw that Mm -hmm. i you know and i would say you got to see it in 3d i mean you you, if you if you wait till video you're going to miss out on so much what this movie is you'll probably still have fun you can invite a bunch of guys over and get drunk and watch it and have a time of your life but if you can take those same guys and sneak into a theater and see it in 3D, all the more. But yeah, I give it a matinee. Yeah, just talking about it, honestly, it, it made me uh, want to change my matinee to a full price. But there's still there's still things about it where I'm like, hey, man, if they just amped it up just a little bit more, you know, especially you know, especially during the smaller scenes where I'm like. After watching the movie, you're like, wow, that could have been really crazy. And you know what? I still want that crazy-ass movie. I know maybe maybe when that guy goes on to direct his next movie, maybe I'll finally get that movie. But I'm going to give this like a very a very strong uh, matinee, only because I'm really dying to give it a full price. Only because, yeah, you, you do need to see this in 3D just to get the, just to get the full effect. And, and, but if you go, I mean... Go go at midnight. Go go to a midnight sh- screen. Even though well, you won't be, be paying that day, but then that would be <laughs> just give fuck it. it. I'm just gonna give it a full price. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. <laughs> fuck it. I'm, I'm been like I don't want to be the odd man I'm, out. But I'm, it's get, a full I'm giving price. it a full. I will. Well, I, you know, I, I will give it an enthusiastic. Nobody full price, wants to be the one honestly. that the, that the spildles all come down yeah. on. I can't yeah. believe you gave yeah. that a full price. I know. You know, the thing is, I just know if this guy goes on to do another movie and he really like takes it to where the crank movies are, like just to that extreme. You know what? That, that movie was, it, is it going is to be short a full price for me, well, at least. Yeah. Co-host, I mean, uh-huh. you're talking about if he goes on to do another movie, yeah. he's made some movies. Movies oh, that has you he? like. Well, let me tell you something. This guy, he kind of knows how to work that 3D in a fun way. Mm-hmm. He made one of your favorite movies one time that yeah. people gave you shit for. Yeah, well, what, what was that? Dracula 2000. You know how you love it? Holy shit, <laughs> no, 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 he did that. <laughs> not that one. No, no, he, no. Did, he did do that movie, <laughs> but he went on to do My Bloody Valentine. Oh no shit! Okay, yes. I love that movie. Yeah. yeah, Pat, what's his name? Uh, uh Pat, uh, what's the goddamn boy? Show name Patrick Lussier. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So, oh, cool. So you know he doesn't really make good movies, but <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, you, you can know. still enjoy them. You know? our, our buddy Raymond, he the Dracula, <laughs> Dracula two thousand was his favorite movie, and right over there on that specific on that, on wall, that, on that wall right there on that door, he had Dracula two thousand. He had that poster hanging up. He had that with, poster with up the there. greatest pride. Had, if you look closely on the wall. Like so the shroud of Jesus, yeah. There's still like the like the poster's gone, but you can still see a human figure on there with Dracula 2000 is walking <laughs> in the street in 3D. In 3D, no man. I, this, this is those. This, this is one of those action films that I wait for. Those movies where all the hipsters say, "Oh man, you see that movie? They didn't mm. care, man. They meant to make a just a bad but fun action film." I'm yeah. looking at it's like, no, they made a bad film. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know you hate it. Piranha's one of those movies that pulled. Piranha 3D is one of those movies that pulled it off greatly for me and. And this movie is the it's that movie that is real. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the real shit. <laughs> yeah. And it's so true that this is a this is a midnight movie that you should like try to take a six pack in there if you can and drink it. Cause oh, I easily. can't tell you how many movies we just felt like suckers that we went into saying, man, oh, this is going to yeah. be great. Let's get drunk. Mm-hmm. And we just end up drunk and crying. At the yeah. end. <laughs> that is the thing. There's a point. Just wasting point. Our lives. Drunk and pissed. There's yeah. a point when the alcohol turns that the movie's not fun, that you're just even more miserable miserable than you would have been otherwise. Oh, yeah. We fight each other. Yeah. Was, you know, yeah. you, I'm looking at you looking at me. Why the fuck you do this to me? <laughs> what the fuck you looking at? <laughs> no, nah, this, is, this is the one, though. This is the one that we can all love each other. You can't stop me. I am going to kill you. Between now and then, I'm going to mess you up. What kind of gun is that? Drive angry, shot in 3D. Wouldn't want to be you when Satan finds out. What's he going to do? Not let me back in? (laughs) 